Okay, everybody, welcome to Caliber Corner. Welcome to Caliber Corner. Says that we are live right now. We got episode number 128 going on this evening. And tonight we're going to talk about um, best home defense firearms, uh, what we recommend, what we keep around the house, what works for us, and uh, some not so popular calibers. Should we look at investing in those? Because right now, for a lot of people, that's about all you can find for ammunition that's in the stores. And we'll discuss some of those calibers when we get there. And that always seems to be the uh, the case anytime that there's a, uh, a bad situation going on out there. We got a pretty good panel with us this evening. we got a lot of people joining in, so let's go ahead and let the panel go ahead and introduce themselves. Just a quick reminder that tonight's episode is brought to you courtesy of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Guys, I want you to take that exit at Lexington, Nebraska, and SS Pond will take care of your firearms needs. Stop in there. Say hello, say hello to Stan. It's just off to the right-hand side of Interstate 80 at uh, Lexington, Nebraska. So, Real quick here, let's go ahead and let the panel introduce themselves, and we'll just get into a little discussion on guns, because gun sales are through the roof right now. Um, everybody and their dogs picking one up, dogs, and uh, I think Charlie bought one too, if I'm not mistaken. So real quick, let's go ahead and let the panel introduce themselves. Um, on my left over here, we've got Rich White. Rich, what's going down, man? Man, not too much. How are we doing? Man, I'm doing okay. I'm doing good. Not my usual man cave. It's not quite as exciting as it was before, but it's it's nicer. But uh, so, Rich, tell us a little bit about your channel. Uh, you got a show that you do. What's that show called? What's it all about? Yeah, shows this week unloaded. It's basically we talk uh, guns, politics, whatever else that might come up off the top of our heads while we're doing the show. You know, we really very rarely have a set topic. It's just whatever we come up with is what we talk about on a weekly basis. Usually, it, but most often it's going to be something firearms related or political, or sometimes we even get into religious discussions, which which is when things really get interesting. Because Kingpin and I have a tendency to want to pick on Islam a lot, mm -hmm. so no, mm. then, so if you go back and you watch some of the old shows, you might hear some things about Islam that where we're laughing at some of the things that are said in the Quran and stuff. So, gotcha. You know, things that are out there, and that's on Sunday nights between 8 and 9 p.m. start time over on the Unloaded Media channel. Hey, and just to let you know, I did get four of a kind last night on video poker, so now I'm up to 590. So I have not closed out my tab yet because we were playing video poker on your show last night. Oh, <laughs> you, you are addicted. <laughs> no, just because I haven't closed out the tab yet does not mean that I have an addiction. I, and, and like I'm not playing with real money, so, you know, <laughs> exactly. I'm playing with rolls of toilet paper instead, so... <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, it's always good to have you here. I appreciate it. Uh, Squib Load, what's going on, man? How you doing? Good evening, everybody. Furloughed at home. <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a permanent uh, <clears throat> quarantine, you want to say? Yeah. Well, no, it's not uh, permanent, but yeah, it's not permanent. But this is really weird. I, I'm I don't normally do the show from my recliner. You don't hear the injection molding machines going in the background. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know, man. Yeah, uh, you know, I got DJ Trump on the TV with the volume down. And, yeah, great. Course, Squib, yeah. get over here! Okay, you know, there is one thing that I don't miss. <laughs> as much as I'd rather be at work right now, I don't really want to hear that forklift. You should be logged in with your forklift avatar instead because we, we miss that forklift. I can't man. get that's, the that's avatar of, to change. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Night Strike says it's really easy to do, but I, I haven't figured out how to undo it. I understand, man. Okay, well, there's nothing wrong with little dirty Harry. It's all good. So, all right, moving off to his right, we got the kingpin, David Bowling, in the house. How you doing, kingpin? What's going on, man? Uh, doing pretty well. Thanks for having me, Travis. Good to see everybody tonight. All right, man. Welcome back. Good to have you here. Okay, and then uh, new to Caliber Corner, we've got uh, another fellow Nebraskan, Pat Hirsch. What's going on, Pat? How's it going? Uh, going good. I uh, just wanted to say uh, thanks for having me on tonight. Um, nice to always come on a show with uh, another fellow Nebraskan. I um, uh, just wanted to give uh, uh, this week uh, Unloaded Media another little plug there uh, on Sundays. Um, I've enjoyed being on his show. So yeah, if uh, anybody out there hasn't ever seen that one too, uh, check it out on Sunday nights. Cool beans, man. All right. Quick explanation. The beard is gone. I know it's going to be controversial in the chat tonight. Um, it's just more sanitary, guys. It's just to maybe help me out a little bit to stay healthier. So the beard's gone. The beard will come back at some point, and uh, life will continue. So real quick, let's see who's oh, joining I in. Were, I thought What's you that? were shedding your winter coat. 
No, I normally keep this on until school gets out. No, I uh, I just decided to take it off. Just you know, whatever, just to be a little more sanitary and stuff. So, because I still go out in public once in a while if I have to. I'm still not. I mean, I'm you yeah, know staying at you, home. If you'd left the beard, you could have got mm-hmm. into stores when the seniors were in. I'm just saying. Oh man, you know what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 I like feeling a little, a little ten years younger. So I don't know. Maybe I got to take your notes and start doing that. So, all right. Uh, real quick, let's see, see who's joining us in the uh, in the chat tonight over on the YouTube side. Got a little trauma jock going on. Chris from Kentucky, Marco Dung, Mystic Marco Dunn, Mystic Guns, Gun Toting Pacifist is out there. Kingpin's out there, and over here tonight, guy that comments is watching this evening. Gun Snobs out there. Hello, Gun Snob. Calvaris thirty two special. Um, Reiki one rolling trip garage guy eight seven nine. Trauma jock tacos and French fries. Always, always tacos and French fries. Never enough tacos and French fries. Uh, Rob Shaw's out there too. Blue Steel forty four in the house. Billy the cab driver. Welcome back, Billy. I'll be catching up with all of your comments here uh, shortly. Calaveras32 Special says, best home defense, M777 Howitzer and 155 millimeter. Mic drop. Yeah, that would pretty much do the drop, I think. Defense dads out there. Uh, <laughs> my kid's Nerf, Nerf Gatling gun. There you go. That's a good one. Those are wicked. Yoder Texas is out there too. Budget guns of gear and Kiwer and also Rich White's over there and over here. So the topic for tonight and again, these comments that you're going to start seeing, real quick, just to remind everybody, I'm doing a uh, Ruger Wrangler giveaway, and we're going to be sending a Ruger Wrangler Wrangler to one qualified recipient. All you got to do is go to my channel, Travis P11 on YouTube, <clears throat> find the video for the Ruger Wrangler giveaway, and go ahead and post a comment about a, I think it was a topic for a future episode of Caliber Corner. And if you do that, you're going to be put into the drawing. Obviously, you got to be somebody who can legally purchase a firearm, and we will do the best we can to get that to you. If you're the winner, we'll do the drawing in about a week or two. I'm going to let that get a lot more suggestions because I feed off those suggestions for ideas for the show because I work pretty hard. I'm pretty busy, and I don't always have a topic on standby for what the show is going to be about. But for tonight, um, what we're looking at is, and and I'm not trying to play off of the, uh, you know, the, the Cerveza virus panic that's going on, but... Home defense firearms. There's a lot of people that are buying pistols for the first time. Um, There's a lot of people that are getting their handguns. I'm getting a ton of comments from people saying, hey, you know, this is the first gun I bought. You know, thanks for doing this video or this cleaning video came in handy. I've got a lot of people saying it's their first firearm, whether it's the Ruger EC9S or the PC-111 G2 or the Taurus G3. You know, just inexpensive firearms are what people that are buying first time gun owners. So, and another, another, a few, quite a few people had asked the question, hey, what do you recommend for a good just home defense firearm in general? So what we'll do is kind of run through the different categories of firearms, shotguns, pistols, semi-automatics, ARs, AKs, and so on. Maybe talk about the, uh, the pros and cons of, of each one, what we have around the house, what we recommend, and so on. And then we'll take a look at a couple online gun sales, a couple gun distributors to show you that there are, in fact, guns still available out there. Maybe not locally in your neck of the woods, but they are still out there. If you look around, you can find them. Ammo, on the other hand, that's going to be uh, a little bit of a challenge. And then also, another topic is going to be, um, you know, kind of not so popular caliber. Should you invest in one for moments like this where maybe you want to have another weapon ready to go <clears throat> and you can't find that 9 or you can't find that 40, but you can find 22 TCM or you can find 17 whatever, HMR, WMR, whatnot. And so we'll talk about that too. So a lot of babbling tonight. We'll go ahead and get started here. So... Uh, just, just looking at the topic, best home defense firearms. I'm just going to run this one around the panel. Let me know what your preference is for a home defense firearm, what works for you guys, and then we'll kind of look at the different categories of firearms. So, Rich, right, Rich, we're going to start off with you. What is your preference for a home defense firearm, man? What, what works for you? Let's see. I got a few different ones set up for home defense use. Mm-hmm. Like this, but every one of my carry guns is always loaded and located somewhere in the house. Then I have the Shockwave, and then I have my AR-15 pistol as well. The AR-15 pistol is actually my bedside gun. Um, yeah, the Shockwave. Uh, I I do like the Shockwave for that. And if you like using a shot, you know, a lot of people like shotguns. And mm-hmm. this one, it's small enough where if you have to open a door, like a um, Somebody was saying the other night on one of the shows that they have a hard time with a shotgun when they're opening the door, especially if it's a pulled towards you door. With the shockwave, it's small enough where if you're clearing your house, you can pull a door open and still be able to hold that on target, especially if you have a pistol brace and a uh, pistol grip on it. Instead of the bird's head grip, you can hold that with one arm and open the door much easier, and it'll clear the door. 
thing so people pointed ahead of you instead of having to point it down or up mm -hmm. or however you would be comfortable holding the shotgun. So in your opinion, what's going to be the advantage of going 20 versus 12 gauge or 12 versus 20? You've got a 20 gauge, correct? Yes, I have the 20. The 20 is lighter recoiling. So okay. you have issues with um recoil, you know, where you recoil sensitive or you have an arm injury or something else that makes it to where maybe a 20 gauge might be a little much in a platform this small. But mm -hmm. 20 full size 12 gauges, I have no issue with both well, this because it's smaller and Again, with a pump action shotgun, weight is going to be one of your main uh, recoil compensators. And the fact that you can't put a butt stock on here to have an actual recoil pad on the end, I went with the 20 gauge because that'll help with that too. Um, okay. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Really, if you're really recoil sensitive, the shockwave does come in 410 as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. I guess I didn't realize that. I, I mean, I knew they had it in 12 and 20, but I didn't realize that. The 20 always seems to be the one that you see on sale everywhere when you're looking at them and stuff. And the 12s, you don't seem to notice that quite so much. Okay, now, um, with that kind of a setup, Rich, do you need to take into consideration your the home, the surroundings, the rooms, things like that, like apartment versus house? Do you think that's kind of a big deal? Is that something should consider, somebody should consider when they're considering their uh, home defense firearm? What do you think? Yeah, you always need to take that into consideration. Like, if you live out in the middle of the woods somewhere, it's not going to be as big of a deal as far as bullets leaving the house. But mm -hmm. you want to, if you got other people in the house, like you have kids or whatnot, you got to make sure you don't, you know, <clears throat> be careful where your bullets are going to go in that case because you don't want to accidentally, you know, shoot your kid while they're sleeping in case someone. Oh, yeah. Has so if you've got that home defense firearm, and again, I might be talking to some first-time gun owners this evening. I don't know, if, you know, who knows? There might be one or two of you out there that are that are listening. Um, know what's on the other side of the wall and what's on the other side of that wall too. Okay, so really keep it in consideration. Now, I've seen some videos. I remember Racky Veteran did a series of videos on you know like the five five six round, and it would go through multiple layers of drywall and two by fours and the door, and it still went through the chair and still hit the dummy on the other side. And so these are also things you need to consider. And, you know, the shotgun, I remember watching Sarge C4's video when he was using birdshot, and it would go through multiple layers in a trailer, and it busted out the side of the trailer. So, I mean, it, you do need to keep that into consideration. Now, Rich, have you ever considered going with slugs for the uh, the shockwave instead or not? With this one, I've, I haven't tried slugs with it. I've, I've shot birdshot and not buckshot for it. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so that's a solid setup. That does the job. Yeah. And what makes the grass screeners asking, don't you lose power with the 20 gauge? Not enough to where if you're shooting somebody that's breaking into your house, it's going to matter. You don't want to go hunting bear with a 20 gauge, but you can hunt deer with a 20 gauge. So, I mean, it's if the deer, if a 20 gauge is going to take down a deer using a buckshot or a slug, it's going to take, it's going to be plenty for you to be able to defend your home with. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, good. Good to know what you got. Okay, squib load, what about you? What's kind of your preference for the uh, the home defense setup? What do you guys do? What do you guys run around the house? I mean, I guess my go-to for the bump in the night is the Browning High Power. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I, I think I've got, uh, right now I've probably got uh, critical duties in there, but uh, sometimes I'll I'll run the uh, uh, the Rangers in there, the Winchester Rangers, and uh, I'm trying to think of what else I've run in there. Probably Gold Dots. Gold Dots are uh, real good mm -hmm. all around. I mean, I used Gold Dot to uh, to kill a deer, and it worked really good. So um, that that's probably my my bump in the night. You know, that that's the quickest one I can get to, and it's it's reliable. It plenty of ammunition in it. Uh, Anybody can handle one, I and mean, it's not too big, not too small, no. kind of. So, fourteen you know. plus one or fifteen plus one is out the Thir thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I just took that one out yeah. not too long ago, but I can remember what it. Because it's not like a seventeen yeah. or nineteen capacity like you would expect. Well, you know. Yeah. See, that's where the name comes from. It's mm -hmm. a mistranslation. The French for high capacity. <clears throat> it got mistranslated into high power, and you know, somebody goes, "It's a nine millimeter. It's not high power." Well, it originally was high capacity because. Back in 1935, 13 rounds in a handgun was not unheard of, but it wasn't common. You know, whereas today, mm -hmm. most, most handguns are like 15 rounds or more. So uh, un unless it's a compact gun or you live in a restricted state. So uh, it's, 
it's reliable. I mean, uh, I'll eventually change it out with another handgun, but I'm just not sure what would be the replacement. Uh, at some point, we wouldn't mind getting a 380 EZ, and with the kinds of defensive ammunition that's available for that and, and the reloads that I can make, I can make up my own personal defense ammo. For oh, it. yeah. Uh, yeah. That might be, we might just go to to two bedside guns. I'll have the high power and the wife will have the, the EZ because mm-hmm. uh, she backs me up with an AR-15. So if, if me and the dog are going down the hall and I've got the high power behind me is a, uh, is a five, five, six AR. So. <laughs> I think you've got most scenarios covered. It's not like you got to defend an acreage or anything like that, you know? Right. Right. Uh, you know, the, the AR does have, you know, more power as far as mm-hmm. going through walls and it's, it's not exactly, uh, for a house my size, it's not exactly, um, uh, I mean, well, anything's going to go through. I did, a, I did a drywall test over the summer and did a video on it. And everything we tried went through. Um, I think even the uh, black, uh, the cap and ball revolver went through drywall. So mm-hmm. it's, it's going to go through walls. It's, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, that whole know your target, what lies beyond it. So uh, I, I think I've still got some frangible 223, but I haven't tested it out. So that's probably what I should keep in it for now. But I did try, I think, a frangible. I tried something frangible on that drywall, and it went right through it. So that 223 is probably still going to do it. It's just how, how, how much is it going to dissipate once it gets through the second piece of drywall. Uh, and, and as far as stopping somebody at close range, I, I'm not worried uh, about that. But mm-hmm. it's, it's a handy carbine to have. It's, it's, it's going to function. It's going to be easy to control. And... And it's going to have plenty of fire firepower. I mean, if you miss with the first however many shots, you still got that many more before you got to reload. So, it's 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 a decent uh, decent. I mean, if, if if me and the dog are taken out, uh, I'm going to want her to have the AR-15. Oh, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I don't blame you, man. All right, so that sounds like a pretty solid setup for that you guys got going on there. All right, uh, Kingpin, what about you? What's your your go to for for home defense? What do you tend to keep uh, bedside gun or keep on standby? Well, my bedroom is about the size of a football field, so I've got to keep a long range rifle. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna. I'm exactly, not gonna buy exactly. Square foot house, so I need long range. Ruger stuff. Ruger Precision 308. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I live in a pretty small house. Uh, since I don't have the uh, capacity to carry due to the state that I live in and the rules, I switch my bedside gun, kind of like some people would switch their carry guns. Uh, so right mm-hmm. now, currently, it's a uh, Smith & Wesson Shield in 40. Mm-hmm. That's going to be the first thing I grab. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong with a shotgun, You know, a nice shotgun, whether you're shooting slugs or... In my house, buckshot or slug at the distances between in the hallways and in the rooms, either one of those is going to eliminate the threat pretty gruesomely. And then, uh, if I really had to really had to choose something a little bit more special, I'd go with my AR pistol. Okay. Yeah, I can't say I'm much different than you on that one. So, all right. And uh, Pat, Pat Hirsch, what do you think, man? What's what's kind of the home defense go to for you guys? Um, well, bedside is my uh, P ninety five DC uh, with a fifteen rounder in it instead of the stock ten, mm-hmm. and uh, a German Shepherd named Dolce at my bedside. And... <laughs> gives you the heads up that something's coming. You know, a couple seconds in advance uh, gives you plenty of time. Oh, she's great. I, I, the best dog I've ever, ever had. Yeah. Um, and the wife is backing me up and don't y'all laugh at me, but it was at the right price and I hey. sold it to me for dirt cheap. I hear high point coming. Was... Wait, you bought it yep. off of cheaper than dirt, Pat? Did you say you just bought something from cheaper no, 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 than no. dirt? Oh, no, it was dirt I... cheap. Oh my God. I thought we were going to have to boot you out of here. No, no. Hell no. <laughs> hell I'm just messing no. with you, brother. It's all right, man. Yeah. All right, so what what is it? What is it? You don't need to be ashamed of it. It's okay. We've we've all owned a, a series of firearms, and it's just any gun's better than no gun. All right. Right, and I'll tell you what. I've had good. It's nine millimeter carbine. Okay. And I went and got the bullpup stock 
for it mm. and actually shortened it up even more. The high tower defense. I'll tell you what, that. Yeah, and it. I know what you're talking about. Makes for, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my yeah. wife loves it. She shoots it all the mm-hmm. dang time. So, and it, I've never had any problems with it, and she's accurate with it. So I guess that's all that counts. And the high point, the high point carbine, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and they're dude, they're they're completely. There's nothing wrong with those at all. They're great. I mean, you could get one in ten millimeter, get one in forty, get one in forty five with that long barrel and some plus p ammo in that thing. I mean, you've got a nice, relatively easy to to maneuver to manage carbine that's going to have controllable recoil. That's going to use you know the same magazines as your handgun if you've got the high point handgun. Um, simple blowback action, <clears throat> and then you've got that that. Now, how much does that shorten up by running that bullpup stock setup? I've seen those before, but man, those high tower defense stocks are like always back ordered like two or three months. So, where did you find one, and what is it like the experience of maneuvering that thing around? Um. It's great because it even works great as a truck gun. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. Just, I think I think it shortened it up five or six inches. Okay. If I remember, I don't know. I'd have to go back and measure the old stock. Yeah. But man, when I did that bullet conversion on it, and the wife loves it because that's that's her gun beside her side of the bed, and mine's the P ninety five DC. And Solid man, P ninety five DC is a freaking tank, had- dude. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love it because just for that reason, you know, and that's my carry gun mm-hmm. too. So, what kind of ammo are you running in both of back. those? Um, I'm running the uh, Spear Gold Dot stuff. Excellent. And mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I, I I like the ammo because um. The way I the way I tested it, I know I saw Iraq veteran uh, do this on a with a couple different ones, but I had to just do some testing myself. Um, shot a couple of uh, deer carcasses that were fresh roadkill beside my road just to see, just propped them up, shot through them just to see how that would react to mm-hmm. you know just flesh, and really by the time that it got through there and everything um really it, it wasn't bad i don't think it would over penetrate to the outside of the house but it's probably going to go through at least one more wall on on my guesstimation anyway my redneck science oh yeah there you go <laughs> uh so for people that don't know guys high tower armory they make or high tower defense they make a bull put conversion kit for your high, your high point carbine and yeah, it does shorten it up. So it's down to probably 26, 27 inches total. I think, I think they're like 32 or 33, uh, just the regular configuration of the, uh, the high point carbine. I had one back in the day. I had one of the, I had one back in the late nineties, one of the first gen nine millimeters. And I loved it, man. So this is what it looks like. And it still, it still takes your standard, uh, high point magazines, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, you add, you add, you add proper Picatinny rails to it. You don't have kind of the wonky rails that come on the newer high point carbines. They make them in various calibers. And, uh, yeah, there's, dude, there's no shame in that. That's a nice little setup. And, you know, especially if the wife's confident using it, who cares? You know, that's what matters the most. So. Yeah, she can drill tacks with it out to 20 yards with it. And yeah, they usually can. You know, <laughs> well, well, and for most battles that are going to be in that close of a range, you know, most of that stuff happens within 20 feet. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, here's the thing, man. Look at this. You can get this. You can get this OD green high tower defense bullpup. You can get yourself the 10 millimeter high point carbine for, I think I've seen them for 240 on uh, gun broker. So for under 600, you have yourself a 10 millimeter carbine. And considering Ruger doesn't have one yet in 10 millimeter or in 5.7, I mean, I'm just throwing some calibers out there. It's not a bad option for somebody that wants to go with that kind of a setup, you know? Yeah. And, uh, Basically, and I've got one of the old school ones, like when High Point first came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the original. I call it the Planet of like the I Apes said, stock I, or whatever. I, I, yeah. yeah, exactly. It was horrific. <laughs> so Honestly, dude, I, I liked it. it better. I liked it better than the old than the new ones. I think the new ones are just there's just too much crap going on. They're heavy. I mean, it's nice having all those accessory, you know, accessory rail attachment points and stuff like that. But um, I don't know. I still like the design of the old one. I thought they were just a lot more smoother looking, a lot more slick, but. You know, not not quite as usable though at the other on the other end. Yeah, and my last gun 
that I've got is a old, old Remington trench gun model 11 that's got that's been sawed off and has a uh, muzzle brake on the end of it just to barely oh. make it legal and that thing is a thumper <laughs> mm -hmm. so solid I solid mm -hmm. yeah. all right for me uh, around the house i've got a glock 17 gen 4 with the tlr1 that i keep on my side my wife's got a, a smith and wesson sd9 ve that i've shown off my channel before and that's got an olight on it and if stuff gets real, I've got a couple different AR pistols. This is a three, uh, ten and a half inch, three hundred blackout, um, Bear Creek Arsenal with the PSA lower. And then for a shotgun, I like the uh, Maverick eighty eight SP security. It's got the extended magazine tube on. It's either seven plus one or eight plus one, if I'm not mistaken. And then I got a side style carrier on it. Unfortunately, I can't show it off on camera because I don't want to get dinged by YouTube. But and those are around two hundred dollars, and they're fantastic. They're they're great. And so I keep that around in case stuff gets real. You know, if I need to go for some sort of heavy duty backup, like a straight up property defense scenario. Um, then I've got my 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 AR, my five five six AR too. But again, yeah, shooting in the house, shooting. You know, I'm in an apartment building now, so I got to keep these things into consideration um, with what I keep around the house and where I'm pointing those guns. Now, granted, there's brick all the way around, which might stop the rounds from exiting if I'm just shooting out of a handgun. But you know, no guarantees. Yeah, one more thing about the shockwave I forgot to mention. The capacity mm -hmm. on this, mm -hmm. you have a fully loaded capacity on all three, the 12, the 20, and the 410 of six rounds. When it's fully loaded, that's five in the tube and then one in the chamber. So you're not giving up too much ammo capacity compared to the full-length uh, tactical shotguns where you might lose one or two rounds depending on the brand. Okay, now I I know it kind of defeats the purpose, but does anybody make a plus one extension tube for that yet? Just something to get it out there, just a couple inches, just to give you an extra shell. I know. I'm surprised. I mean, I get that's kind of going against the idea of having a close quarters, easy maneuver. But if you know, if, you know, for a little extra capacity, you might be able to put something else on the end of it. Uh, real quick, let's see what's going on in the chat out here. Billy the cab driver says my faves for home defense are either my Glock 22 with the spare mag or a Charter Arms Bulldog 44 special. Got plenty of ammo for both of them. Hey guys, go and throw out there what you prefer to use or what you want to get for uh, home defense firearms. We can mention it. Joey Joe says I got a Breda M983 with an Olight Valkyrie loaded with some hollows under the bed, concrete walls where I'm at. Solid setup. There you go. Marco Dunn says, I have a single barrel 20 gauge that I keep handy. I've got a, uh, a Midland Backpacker break action single shot 12 gauge. And I've got a little side saddle carrier with some buckshot shells in it also. And so some, I don't know, it's like double odd buck if I'm not mistaken. And um, that's that's a nice little, just, you know, kind of kind of little single shot to keep around the house in case you need it. You can put it someplace where maybe you don't want to put other firearms. Uh, let's see here. Anybody else chiming in with what they've got around the house? High point carbine is good for those in commie states. Oh, if it's compatible, if you can buy it, yeah, definitely. Kyle uh, had a question for squib load. Okay, wanted, go ahead. Yeah, he wanted he wanted to know how many of those forty fives that he mag dumped into that deer were spear gold dots. <laughs> uh, so the the deer last year was uh, uh, what was it? It was those inceptors, and it was uh, critical defense or critical duty. This year it was one shot with a gold dot, two hundred thirty grain gold dot, fifty yards, right through the eye. 1911, man. Don't leave home without it. <laughs> oh, man. There you go. All right. So what I want to do is just kind of move into let's let's talk about the pros and cons of different types of firearms. And then again, maybe we're going to be hitting some first time gun buyers on this one. Things to keep in consideration. Uh, let's just kind of throw it. So the pan, we don't have to go around the around the horn on this one. We don't have to you know run through the whole panel. But the handgun, what do you guys think? Is that is that the go to? Should that be the go to for? Home defense. Let's just talk house defense, apartment defense, not open acreage defense. Okay, what do you guys think? The handgun, pros and cons? What do you guys think? Okay, so the pros are the size. You can put it in a lockbox by the bed if you need to secure it for whatever reason. you got kids in the house or mm -hmm. whatever it is. And, and it's also easy to maneuver through your house or apartment or whatever you have. And it's going to have enough firepower to, to take down an assailant. And I mean, if they're if they're hyped up on drugs, you might have to do a mag dump into them. But uh, it's going to have enough firepower to do that. But yet, you don't have to worry about the over penetration as much as, say, a rifle. 
So those are the, I would say those would be the pros. Obviously, you want to make sure you've got a good self-defense round in there. You don't want to run, in my opinion, you don't want to run ball ammo unless you absolutely have to. I'm just thinking about over penetration. Now, what about the cons there, Squib? What do you think? Possibly capacity, depending. If you're a 1911 <laughs> guy like me, unless you've got a double stack para, you're 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 only limited to say maybe seven or eight rounds, which I'm okay with. Uh, that that 1911, if I can hit what I pointed at, that's all that matters to me. For other people, capacity is king because they can't hit the broadside of a barn or. Mm. I guess the animal won't die. <laughs> well, multiple assailants. You could be looking at groups of two or three that could be rushing into a property. I mean, that's yeah, you know, that does that happen. So, so, and I'm not trying to get anybody that, scared, but I'm just saying that's one advantage of having. It, but if you're good with they, your shots, you know. They show footage all the time, you know, home camera where three or four teenage kids kick in the back door. It's all caught on camera and they get into the house. And yeah, so at that point, but I'm just saying for some people when they're envisioning their defense some people are going, I want stopping power. I want accuracy. I want capacity. I w and that's their top thing. And, and just because it's not the top thing for me doesn't mean that it's not a good thing to have or it's not the top thing for somebody else. Uh, but but yeah, I, I yeah. would say, though, that you know, if you had a semi-auto rifle, you're going to have more, even more capacity so than, than a handgun. But because you could empty that, that I mean, how many times, I mean, it's not very often, but, but, you know, there are reports of, of yeah. gunfights, of police gunfights where they've no, yeah, and yeah. they've had to change mags. And, you know, some people do carry spare mags or speed loaders or whatnot on them. So, so that, you know, with your rifle, you're, unless it's a, a pistol caliber carbine that uses a uh, pistol mag, but even then some of these ones that take Glock mags, you can put a 33 round, you know, Glock mag in it or something like that. And you've, you've got more capacity, uh, but but that that might be that might be something depending on what handgun you have. Like if your bedside is also your EDC and your EDC is a subcompact with with a single stack mag, then that that could be uh, a con, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah. The other con too is just remember. I mean, um, I practice a lot and I shoot a lot, and I'm still not the best shot out there accuracy with the handgun depending on what kind of what kind of if you're running an rmr on the top or you're running three dots or night sights or high vis sights or big dots being accurate with the handgun now granted if we're talking within seven yards i would hope most people could hit their target you know or five yards home defense distance but being accurate with the handgun can be difficult you know you might pull the trigger multiple times and you might not get that drop shot that you need um, so accuracy can be, and that's kind of the argument I've heard in favor of going with an AR pistol or an AR-15 for home defense is because of the multiple points of contact, easier to study, uh, much more in terms of the firepower that you can deliver, possible, possibly more accuracy. I've heard that from several experts, right? Um, so I can understand that, but it can be easy because if you don't pay attention with your handgun, you know, you can, it is pretty easy to, to not be on target and to, to really be off. Um, obviously it's going to be, you know, it's going to be much more noticeable at longer distances. So, so pros are going to be, you know, ease of mobility, possibility of, you know, controlling recoil depending on the caliber. Um, you can have the capacity that you need. Store, yeah, you don't have it sitting out. You can have it wherever you need it, keeping it in a safe place for the time when you need it the most. Cons, and I would just say cons could be accuracy. Cons could be capacity depending if you're just running like a five or six shot revolver or if you're just running, say, something with a single stack in it. I love my SR-1911, but it's only an 8 plus 1 the way that I'm running it. Um, so yeah, I guess I can see it. So there's some pros and cons to each one. Okay. Gotcha there. Uh, anybody else want to chime in on that one? Handguns in general, pros and cons. We, do we hit, hit every little nail on the head there? What do you guys think? I think it's pretty much covered. I mean, you just gotta make sure you have a good, uh, defensive round. And like you were saying, don't use a, a full metal jacket round because that's going to go right through any barrier. I mean, so. As Paul Harrell did a video where he was shooting through a washing machine with one that you know used a mm -hmm. nine millimeter using um, ball ammo, and some of them even the hollow points went straight through it. So you got to be careful. Oh yeah, so you got a hollow point. You got to make sure you know what's on the other side of your target. Mm -hmm. uh, hey guys, Duke Liberty's joining us. Duke, what's going on? How you doing, man? Hey, we're doing real good. How you doing, man? Thanks for the invite. Sorry, I was late. It's okay. Well, since you're late, now you got to address the class here. Uh, what, <laughs> what, uh, what is your kind of your, your go-to bedside gun for home defense? What is your home defense setup? What are you comfortable sharing with us? Yeah, uh, M and P fifteen with the stock removed for a uh, fixed 
like old school yeah. stock. Um, the A2 that. style is that we call them? I can't remember off the top of my head. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. The A2, like okay. the A2 style stock uh, with a flashlight attached to it. That's it. Nothing else. Are you running like a 55 grain ball round? Or are you running like a soft point AR, like a 62 grain or 77? Do you have a special round that you're keeping in that, in that AR for home defense? Just a regular ball ammo with a 55 grain, nothing too shabby, nothing that needs to over penetrate. Mm -hmm. uh, I got space between myself and the folks that live near me, so I'm less concerned about that. I know my avenues, and I'm the first barrier between myself and the family. So okay. I'm, you know, I'm if I'm out the door, I know that where behind me is safe, so I'm going forward usually. Um, mm -hmm. Stuff like that, yeah. I know that uh, Hornady does make, uh, I don't know if they still make it. I've seen ammo tests on it back in the day. They make a critical defense 5.56, five, and it is absolutely, and, and again, you can take it with a grain of salt, but it is it is absolutely devastating what it does to ballistics gel. I mean, it is ungodly. I mean, and so is, so is you know, 55 grain, 62 grain, whatever, 5.56, five, at, at, at the distances that it needs to do what it does, it's going to obviously be, you know, it's going to work, but uh, that stuff was just crazy. If you don't mind spending about a buck around, it's a pretty hardcore round for your AR. Yeah, and if you're talking about, you know, uh, home defense, a buck around ain't that bad. It's not stuff you're going to be going through shooting up at the range all the time. Uh, I think the biggest thing is just have, picking the platform you're most familiar with. Mm -hmm. I'm most familiar with that kind of platform. I can maneuver it, do whatever I need to do in the dark. I'm not some special operator, but, man, I feel really comfortable with that. I don't feel as comfortable with a shotgun. So okay, that's why okay. I pick that. Uh, and something to consider, people that are listening, if you don't have a suppressor, now might be the time to invest in one. Or if you're getting yourself a fire, maybe consider getting one that has a threaded barrel so you can get a suppressor for it. I don't call them silencers. I call them suppressors, but that's just me. Um, maybe consider that because we are talking about deafening amounts of noise if you'd ever have to use this for home defense. And you might not have time to put on ear pro if somebody kicks in the door or if there's a bump in the night or whatever. You know, you might have to reach for that firearm. And there is different, obviously going to be different decibel levels, whether you're shooting an AR or you're shooting a handgun, but within a closed room, it's going to be loud. So if you can get a suppressor, if you can get the right kind of ammunition for it, go that route. You know, we're looking at, I don't know, what's the wait time, six months to get a suppressor in some, in some places. So uh, consider that and there's the cost, but I'd recommend having one. I don't have one for home defense. I really should maybe work on that as my next purchase because I could use a 30 caliber suppressor on multiple rifles because I've got several firearms that have the same thread pitch on them. So <clears throat> just a thought. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to shotguns. Okay, pros and cons of shotguns for home defense. Now, whether you're talking a shockwave, uh, 12 gauge or 20 Mossberg shockwave, 12 or 20 gauge, you know, short shotgun, or I'm sorry, not a shotgun, whatever the official title is for the shockwave. Or if you're looking at something like what I have here, which is a shorter barrel shotgun, uh, not a short barrel shotgun for home defense. Um, and one of the reasons why I do want to cover definitely pistols and shotguns is because right now, when I went to Walmart yesterday, our Walmart sells firearms, they had plenty of shotguns in stock. In a lot of places, that's all you can get are shotguns. Now, the good thing, too, about shotguns at this point in the, the, with the firearms that people are buying, <clears throat> shots, shot shells, your ammunition for your shotguns are still readily available. So that is something to consider. If you don't have a firearm, don't be dead set on just getting a handgun. If you can't get anything at all, you can't find anything in your neck of the woods or get anything, see if you can locate yourself a, a shotgun pump action or some sort of a semi-auto. I'm not saying waltz around with a 28-inch barreled shotgun in your house, but it's better than nothing, and I would take it over nothing. Okay, You would just simply have to learn how to use it in your home for home defense. But let's run through shotguns. What do you guys think? Uh, maybe some suggestions out there. Rich, you like your, uh, your Mossberg Shockwave. What else do you guys recommend? Um, a good pre-freedom group uh, 870 is a good choice. Um, okay. Mossberg 500, 590, mm -hmm. 590A. Those are good ones. If you don't want, if you're not into Mossberg and you prefer Remington, you could always get a TAC 14 or a TAC 13, which are basically the same thing. And you can go ahead and you can put the pistol, the, they have the same adapters that allow you to put pistol braces and pistol grips on those as they do for the shockwave. So you can set it up like that with one of those as well. Um, and a lot of these shotguns that we're talking about here, there are shorter barrel versions that are available for home defense, like this, the Maverick 88 that I have behind me. It's got the extended magazine tube from the factory, and it has a slightly shorter barrel than just their normal pump model. Uh, another good one, if you don't want to spend a lot of money, I had one, and it just shot like a beast. It's 
heavy as heck, but it's absolutely awesome. The uh, H&R Partner Pump. I don't even know if they make them anymore, but I got mine at Walmart for like $147 and I got the shorter version of it. And that thing weighed so much. I mean, the recoil was like nothing. I mean, you don't have any choke tubes. It's just, I believe, improved cylinder, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, or even maybe just cylinder bore. And that thing was just awesome. I mean, you could shoot that thing all day. It had just the synthetic synthetic uh, furniture on it. I had a side saddle on it. I had a, a sling on it. And that was under $200. Now, granted, it's made by a company called like Hawk Industries in China, okay, as, as are a lot of your H&R firearms these days. But again, you might have to get what you can get. There might not be much out there for selection. But yeah, like what Rich was saying, if you can get yourself a, a pre freedom group Remington, go that route if you can. Or you know, look at going with the Moss, going with the Mossberg. What do you say, Mossberg five hundred? I'm not familiar with it, but G twenty three mentioned out in the chat. He mm -hmm. asked me to bring up the KSG twelve. Oh, the Keltec KSG twelve. I've never fired one before. I think Stan from SS Pond said that he has, and they do kick like a mule. What do you guys think yeah, about the KSG? The KSG kicks like a <clears throat> mule. If you're going to get one of those, you want to make sure you get a really good recoil pad for the end of that thing. We can uh, take a look at it real quick. Yeah, if you can get a hold of one of those, and you might find some of those because when you start to look at the higher end prices of the firearms, I mean, a lot of those are still uh, still in stock. You know, if you look around, you can still get them. You might not be able to get some of those more common, popular uh, shotguns right now. But this is here's your KSG right here, bullpup shotgun. Yeah. <clears throat> Granted, you're gonna have to add something for optics or you know some some sort of iron sights on that or a dot or something yeah, to work yeah. with. Yeah, it doesn't come with any sights. I took about the um flip-up sights that I had on my AR-15, and I put them on my son's before he sold it, and they worked fine. I didn't even have to re-zero them. They were, the zero that I had for them for my uh, AR-15 pistol worked fine with uh, with that. I mean, they were right on target with it. So you got something on an AR-15, and you need something to throw a click on it. If you get a KSG, you can throw your flip-up sights, and they should work just fine right out of the... Oh, know, yeah, there. definitely. I don't know if it comes with that Magpul uh, AFG, but they've got that on there in the pictures. I didn't see it in the main picture, but maybe they include no, they it with don't it. Come on there. it okay, okay. The there's, it's, there's no forward grip. There's no sights, nothing like that. There's okay. no recoil pad on there, nothing. So you got two magazine tubes. How much? What's the capacity on that? On that one? 12 14, gauge. 14, 7 in each tube, one in the chamber. And they also they have the compact, which is your SBS version, and then they also have the KSG twenty five, which you see there, which is a thirty inch barrel. There you go. Holds 25, 24, 25 rounds, twelve uh, rounds in each barrel. I mean each uh, magazine, and then one in the chamber, and it still comes in about the same size as a Mossberg five hundred with an eighteen and a half inch barrel. Yeah, thirty eight inches overall. The weight on it is 9.25 pounds, so it's a little bit heavy for the KSG 25. But I'll tell you what, for snow goose season, where in Nebraska you don't have a uh, shell limit, if I'm not mistaken, or a bag limit, that's the way yeah, to go would, right there. <laughs> yeah, that would make a good bird gun. <clears throat> oh, man, it's kind of like one of those, what do they call them, like punt guns or whatever, those ones you used to have on the boats back in the day? Oh, no, no, <laughs> punt guns, you take out a whole flock with one shot. Well, this, okay, I guess this wouldn't do that. But still, this is pretty cool anyway. <laughs> yeah, See, that's, this... that's two gauge. Two yeah, there you go. <laughs> Those are basically golf balls that you're launching out of that thing, you know. <laughs> Five gauge there, uh, Pat. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Did you ever have um, any trouble with those? What's that? Did you ever have any trouble with those uh, chambering uh, slugs to buckshot? Oh, the KSGs or what? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I had a friend who had one, and we were mm. having a hard time with it. Uh, cycling through slugs to buckshot. I wondered if anyone else had ever had that issue. Were you running the Agula mini slugs through it? The little mini shells? Were you trying to run no, those? No, 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 no. Okay, just any, just no. just basic slugs in general, right? Yeah, and he had mm. a hard time with it, and it, I wondered if anyone else had had a similar experience with that, or that was just a one-off issue. Yeah, I, I've never heard anybody having that issue. I've been trying it with my sons. We, we didn't have any um, slugs to try it with, so I couldn't tell you from first-hand experience, but other people I've heard talk about them it didn't seem like they had that issue. So. Okay, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I mean, there's just a possibility that the slugs could be just a little bit slightly larger diameter. That's not an issue in traditional magazine feeding tubes, but on the KSG, for some reason, 
it could just be a little bit too tight to cycle properly. This, maybe there's some swelling around the uh, the shell yeah, itself. That but was, that was my thought process. <clears throat> that was my thought process on it. That was the best I had. But thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, but one, going back to the shockwave, you brought up the Gila mini shells. There's the the Mossberg adapter for the 500 works in the shockwave if you have the 20 gauge, so you can use those in your Mossberg shockwave as well. Okay. I, I think Sarge has a. Sarge just talked about it. He, he may have a video. I don't remember where he was showing it being used. So if you look on uh, C4 Defense channel, you might see a video where he's using them. I can't remember if he did a video on it or not. But he has tried them and said that it does work. Uh, let's see here, guys. I've got supposedly my. my is my mic coming, coming across really loud on your end? Does it seem to be louder than usual? I'm using a different headset that I haven't used before for podcasts. So that might be. Uh, Sound all right to me. Uh, uh, I'm gonna oh. see if I can change my input volume on this real quick while we're working on it. Uh, no, you don't sound louder at all. You sound okay. Okay. And oh, louder. I did move the microphone away from my face here, so hopefully I'll have to go back and watch it and see what uh, yeah. see what it sounds like. It yeah, Scott P79 brought up that they do have the uh, single uh, Mag2 version of the uh, Caltech now as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the, <clears throat> I'm going to move the microphone a little ways away. So those of you, hey, those of you that are watching out there in the chat, can you kind of give me a, a thumbs up if the audio is okay? Let me know if it's too loud or not. And I'll just, I, all I can do is move the microphone away from my face right now. I'm not able to get into my mixer settings and mess with it because I don't want to cut off my audio all, all together. So your volume is way up, man. Okay. I don't know what the deal is. All right. So G webs, how about that? <laughs> Does that look a little bit better? Does that sound a little bit better guys? Hmm. I'm not sure what the deal is, so I might just have to talk a little bit quieter. I mean, I'm usually pretty loud anyway, but uh, let's see here. Is that a little bit better, guys? I don't know. Okay, we'll just keep it around. We'll keep it. We'll keep it away from my face, and I'll play around with the sound mixer settings here later on. So, okay, I'll try to use my inside voice instead. So, uh, okay. So the next uh, firearm that I want to talk. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So again, pros and cons. Uh, cons with the shotgun. Uh, you know, we're talking about maneuverability around the house can be a challenge, length, uh, limited capacity, although I hope you would need more than seven or eight to do what you need to do. Yeah. Oh, uh, to recoil. What's that? They're prone to over penetration if you miss your target. Okay. Uh, like we, like you said, with Sarge, with the shockwave, and that's going to have less velocity where a full length mm -hmm. shotgun will do the shorter barrel. And that was just blowing out the walls on that mobile home like they were nothing. Okay. So that's something you got to keep in mind with a, any kind of shotgun or something to fire the shotgun round because, you know, the, sh the shockwave, the Tag 14 and Tag 13, they're not shotguns, so. <laughs> but they do fire a shotgun round. Of course, you also, yeah. have the, um, you also have the Black Aces Tactical ones, too, which are based on the uh, Mossberg 500, but they're not the shockwaves. They take the their own uh, – they make a receiver that's based on the Mossberg 500 and that way, they'll use Mossberg 500 accessories, but it's their own firearm. But they're, and then they have a semi auto version of two on theirs. Theirs tend to run a little bit higher, but they're more of a made to order custom kind of thing. So you want to check them out. And they do have accessories for the shockwave as well. So if you do get a shockwave, specifically the 20 gauge, the 12 gauge, I don't know if there's accessories fit the, the 12. Um, I know they fit the 12. I don't think they, I don't know if they have ones fit the 20. That's what I'm trying to say. So, but yeah, check out Black Aces Tactical as well because they have a decent small little one that they have over there, and they they do theirs in the semi-auto. And I, I don't know if they have a pump version, but they do they do have the semi-auto shockwave style firearm. And you're muted there, Travis. So I was playing around with the mixer settings and stuff, trying to get a change. I'll go ahead and just leave it at this right now, so it might be a little bit soft on your end. Those of you that are in the uh, in the in the panel that are with me tonight, and then uh, hopefully on the YouTube side, it's not too crazy. So this is about the best I can do for right now. I want to apologize. So um, again, so so cons again with the shotguns. We talked about maneuverability. We talked about maybe lower capacity than a handgun. Uh, weight management. Now, granted, if you've got a semi-automatic, you don't really have to worry about the pumping action. Maybe you've got a smaller family member. That might need to use it. Uh, if they train with it, they should be able to run it. But again, you've got to be able. You need to be able to manipulate that firearm safely. Uh, what else we got there? 
maybe the 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 recoil. Not that that's going to matter in a a self defense situation, but recoil could also be an issue too with somebody. Maybe they're not looking forward to using it. They might not be as accurate as they need to be because of it. So training with it's going to be very important, obviously. Okay, anything else on shotguns, guys? Before we move on, yeah, to get, good to go. Uh, and, and it's okay. Okay. Well, not cheap, but an easy upgrade to any shotgun that has a bead front sight, excess big dot sight. Mm -hmm. The uh, specifically the night sight version that makes a world of difference, especially on the shockwave. I've found the, the that thing is so much easier to pick up. When you in the middle of the when it's you're in a dark area or whatnot, then with the beat sight on the shotgun, so that's a, that's a recommended upgrade. That, I recommend it, that as a first upgrade for anybody who's got a shotgun that all they have is the front beat sight. Gotcha. Saw half of the barrel off, and then get a lever action and practice flipping it around between each shot, and then you're good. Just remember, those things that you hear the panel suggest, we're not trained experts, so you will be doing these things at your own risk, just as a, uh, a quick heads up. People, so. and the views of the opinion of King Canoni and do not represent the views of the opinions of anybody else on the panel or track to feel on it. And right I, saw, I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger do it in a, in a movie. He was even riding a motorcycle, so how could it be? How hard could it be? Movie magic. Movie magic, Kingpin. That's all I got to say. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the uh, the next category. Let's get into semi-automatic firearms. Um, know, let's just throw something out there. Let's just throw something out there. There might be some people out there that bought their first gun, and they might be stuck with a bolt-action rifle. We're not talking Milserp. We're not talking necessarily carbine. What do you guys think? The deer gun for home defense? Yes, no. Let's just throw it out there. There might be some people. I've got friends, and that's all they have are hunting rifles. They don't have handguns. They don't have ARs. Um, I've tried to convince them to buy ARs, and now they wish they would have. But what do you guys think? You know what? Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I was just saying it's better than a police stick. That's all I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, what's the best gun for home defense? The one that's next to you. So it's better to have one than not. If you're just not into guns or you're new to guns or – all you've ever used it for is hunting and, and you know, okay. I, I know all kinds of people that are, they've got guns for hunting and they might have one handgun. It's not for hunting, but they, they've got gun for hunting and they leave them loaded in a closet and they think that's great for home defense. Well, if you live down on the farm in the sticks, sure it is. Especially if you know everybody in the home, you trust everybody in the home that, you know, you've got strict rules about no, nobody messing with the guns and that sort of thing. But in the city, in an apartment, in a house with kids in it, that sort of, it's not, not a good idea. But if, if something happens, and for example, uh, they're saying that in some places that the police forces have been affected by the COVID-19 thing. Like here in Detroit, 152 cops tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, so if that happens in, in, you know, where you live and you feel that, they're, the response time is going to be even worse or maybe even non-existent for a while because of what's going on. And all you have is that hunting rifle, that bolt action rifle you inherited from grandpa. That's better than nothing. But just understand that this thing is not going to maneuver down hallways too well. And it's going to go through every wall in the house probably. So I now mean, I do want to say I I do want to say one thing I want to I'm going to just kindly disagree with Geo Webs out there. He goes, if all you have is a deer rifle, you're wrong, and it's too late, and you're doomed. Um, let's just kind of take a look at what some of the different rifles are that might actually now, do the job. Okay, minute, I've got a, wait a I got a what? Okay, <laughs> World War Two. World War Two. Mm -hmm. A lot of infantry's carried bolt action rifles, right? And these things mm -hmm. were large caliber okay they, they had a lot of power these, these they were using old trench rifle rounds these things could shoot a long distance a lot of power they would clear houses with these things you can use a bolt action rifle that's a fairly powerful bolt action rifle inside of a structure you just have to know what you're doing you have to be careful. you have to understand the limitations as far as maneuvering i mean when i learned how to clear buildings i did it with a full-size m16a2 and, you know, a lot of people today don't have never shot an AR with a 20-inch barrel. Everybody's shooting 16-inch barrel or shorter, so they're used to that smaller package. So with a full-size stock, not a collapsing stock, and a full 20-inch barrel, I mean, it's a longer gun. But you can clear a house with it. 
It's just knowing what to do. I would say with the thing unloaded, practice. See, see what the, the tight spots are in your house, getting through the house with this bolt action rifle. Put it up in your shoulder and see, you know, um, how, what have I got to do as far as aiming this thing down a hallway or something like that? It's not like being out in the field hunting deer, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, if you're talking hunting rifles, a hunting rifle, depending on where you live, may not even be a bolt action rifle. You could have a lever gun that fires three seven no. or forty four magnum and thirty thirty. Yeah, lever gun. Yeah, better. I would not hesitate to use my Henry forty four magnum in, in this house to protect my family, and it will definitely put anything down. And, I, and I'm talking more traditional deer gun is what I'm saying, more bolt action style. But you're right. Once you start looking at the the old mill serp guns, you start talking lever guns. Your long guns are going to be fine for home defense too. If you if you train with them, you know what you're doing with them. And again, like you said before, know the limitations, especially with the weapon link. So if all you have is a Mosin and a gun to defend the home, you're probably going to make sure that you know what you're doing. You might want to take that bayonet off so you can actually get it around the corners if you need to. Just kind of saying that jokingly. Um, but what I want to say about the bolt action guns, I've got the, the Ruger um, ranch rifle, the Ruger American ranch, chambered 762 by 39, 16 inch barrel threaded. Okay, it does have a Picatinny rail up on the top. I can put a simple red dot on the top. And I've got the 20 round uh, mini 14, no, mini 30 box magazines for it. And I mean, the bolt on it's really smoothed out quite a bit. I can fire it pretty quick and I practice with it a lot. Not that I'd want to defend my home with it, but I could. It's just, I mean, the length of it is not, it's about as long as just like a 16 inch carbine, you know, AR 15. So not that it wouldn't be my one to go to gun, but I'm just saying that it would be a bolt action that would do the job if it had to. Now, granted, I would have to take the scope off the top and run a red dot on it. Or maybe have just a low low magnification optic on the top, but uh, you know then that round would be more than capable for what you need. So you could get a bolt action rifle that would do the job. Now I've got a Mossberg, what is it? The Mossberg uh, Patriot six six five Creedmoor that's got like a twenty inch barrel on it. I mean that thing is just it's just so freaking long. You know, obviously I would not want to defend the home with that. Now I mean the rounds are going to do the job, but then again if you're running this magnified optic on the top and you're trying to stop a home invasion, you're pretty much just going to be blind firing into the mass. You know, it's coming at you. So I can't necessarily recommend, which is why I've always tried to press for my friends that don't have ARs and aren't necessarily handgun people. That's the reason why I've always pressed for those people to um, get themselves an AR or an AK or an AR pistol, AK pistol, handgun, anything, you know. So that's I what would I would recommend say having. Yeah. I would recommend having a purpose-built home defense firearm if at all possible. But if all you got is that bolt action, lever action, single shot, break open, whatever it is, that's like what Rich said, it's better than a sharp pointy stick, but just know your limitations within a structure with it, as opposed to being out in the woods or in the open, you know, out, out in the rolling plains of Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I hear you. I hear you, man. And, and again, you know, what you have, it might also depend on your house. You might have one of these new houses that have the huge tall ceilings, open floor plan where you've got a clear view of the dining room, the kitchen, the living room. You know, you might have large bedrooms. So everybody's housing situation is going to be different. It might be in a little 600 square foot, one bedroom apartment or, or a uh, efficiency or a studio, you know. So you kind of need to tailor something that's going to work best for you. If all you have is, you know, sometimes you just got to make do with what you got. So just keep that in mind. Um Okay, now let's get into now. And then there are semi-automatic deer rifles. You know, got your Brownings and stuff like that. I mean, you there are many out there, and we're not necessarily saying it has to be a bolt action. We're just talking more of your traditional deer hunting rifle. Moving into semi-automatics, we can include ARs, AKs, pistols, carbines, whatever you want to say. Right now, we'll kind of move into the AR area, AK area, and then also pistol caliber carbines can be thrown into this little group too. Um, Pros and cons, what do you guys think? Pros and cons of a uh, AR-15 or AK-47 pistol or carbine. What do you guys think? Yay or nay for home defense? Okay. Yeah, I, 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 oh, go ahead, Duke. Well, I was going to bring up something that's a pro that wouldn't necessarily be, might not necessarily be looked at for the point of this discussion, but I think it has a little bit of merit to it. And that isn't... Uh, within the home it's actually right outside the home i know two instances where somebody having an ar-15 or an ak-47 outside their house without firing a shot without even pointing it at a human being saved their life there were two instances where somebody had to go outside their home and just having that weapon caused multiple assailants to flee when they saw it mm -hmm. 
So it is a deterrent. I'm not saying I'm not using the whole crazy Uncle Joe thing where, you know, go out on the balcony and blast two shots in the air. But the, the yeah. simple fact is that despite the fact that we know that these are legal, lawful guns to own, they, they serve multiple purposes and, and they're, they're really good platforms and stuff like that because they have this, this uh, you know, stigma about them. That does serve a purpose. Yes, it might scare the anti-gunner who wants to take away your rights, but it's also going to scare the bad guy. So I know that that might be a little bit kind of outside of the box, but it's something something that I, I'm like I said, I know of two instances where that has saved somebody's life. So it's just something to keep in consideration. The other one I want to throw into the mix before I forget about, and this was a suggestion from Marco Dunn uh, out there on the YouTube side, the SKS. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple of them. Uh, I've actually got one that uh, Stan had loaned me for testing that I'm going to be playing around with. And then I've also got a sporter model, a Norinco sporter from the 90s that really, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty comfortable gun to hold, surprisingly. It's got the thumbhole stock on it, but it does accept the uh, AK-47 magazines. So the SKS also. So we can throw that in the mix, too. So yeah, like you said, uh, Squib, SKS just that presence of it alone. What's that? Um, depending on which SKS, SKS was a bayonet, it can also turn into a sharp pointy stick. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the one that Stan Lomi does have the uh, bayonet on. It's pretty wicked. It's a, uh, I want to say 1953 Russian, maybe a Tula or an Izhmesh. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. I'm sure I mispronounced that, but uh, it's it's sweet, man. It's beautiful. But yeah, the bayonet's definitely going to be a, uh, uh, you know, the, obviously it's not. You don't want that to be your first line of defense, but it's there. You know, if you need it. And the SKSs, here's the thing, the SKSs are still available. If you don't mind getting your getting your hands dirty and getting it cleaned off, you can still order them online. There's the SKSs for $299, and that's way cheaper than the ARs and the AKs that I'm seeing for sale out there right now. Yeah, I mean, there's – you get – what's that? Classics always find some they can bring in and put on their website. So if you're looking for an SKS Classic, pretty much one place you can almost always expect to find some somewhere. They bring, in, they bring them in from mm -hmm. the Middle East and who knows where else. Well, we'll take a look here in just a little bit and see what Classic actually has for sale. I just go to them because I like their website the best. I mean, I you can love them or hate them, but I like the selection. And there's nothing wrong with Buds, and there's nothing wrong with any of the other online gun retailers. And I like to use Gun Genie and stuff like that. But with Classic, I can at least look at a variety of firearms and just kind of run through the price points on them and stuff like that. Uh, so pros for your semi-automatics. Um, obviously, the deterrent, the side of it. You've got the capacity that's going to be in your favor. Uh, you can go with a shorter version. You could get yourself, say, a seven and a half inch or eight and a half inch three hundred blackout if you want to, or go with the ten and a half inch three hundred blackout or five five six. Um, I've got a bunch of different types. You know, I've got a uh, um, I actually call it what an AR forty seven upper. I've got the Bear Creek Arsenal seven sixty two by thirty nine upper on my five five six lower, and I'm able to run that my side charger. That thing is great. You're going to lose some velocity at longer distances, but if we're just talking straight up home defense, it's perfect because it's very maneuverable. Very short, very compact, perfect little truck gun, perfect little bailout gun. Um, and then also, in my opinion, like, and I agree with what I've seen from some of the trainers and experts and so on out there, that I think you might be a little more accurate with the AR versus a handgun, just in my opinion, because you've got the multiple points of contact and fire them up against your body. Uh, again, the capacity is a big one, too, for dealing with multiple assailants. Now, the problem we're going to run into right now with the ARs and the AKs and the SKS is ammunition. So if you're buying one of these for the first time, you may be struggling to locate 223 Remington or 556. And so hopefully you know somebody that's a, that's a crazy gun nut because now you're going to be relying on them for ammo if you can't find any anywhere, right? Um, so I don't know. I mean, that's that's going to be one of the cons. If you just happen to be a first-time AR or AK buyer right now, you're definitely going to run into that issue. But if you got the ammo, you know, again, nothing wrong with that. Now, cons for these weapons, obviously you're talking noise. Noise is going to be the big one. So if you can get yourself a suppressor, go that route. If you can't, man, I hope you got ear pro and if you got to use it in your house and your family's hearing, you got to keep that in consideration too. And these might be things that you're not thinking of in a life or death situation when you got to defend the home. So Yeah, if you got yeah. a pistol, kiss your night vision goodbye. As soon as you pull that trigger one time, that fireball is going to blind you and the assistant. Yeah. We should probably mention that. If, for those of you that don't have AR, AK pistols, the shorter the barrel you go, other than 300 blackout and maybe some of the pistol caliber carbines, if you just go traditional uh, 5.56, five, uh, you're going to find that uh, that flash to be pretty. And I don't know. I can't imagine what it's like in the dark. Even during the daytime, I can see it going off. It's like a camera flash going off. So that's something that you need to consider, too, if you're shooting a, anything shorter than, say, a 16-inch. 
Uh, now you might be able to mitigate that with the with the proper you know flash suppressor on the end of it or compensator or whatnot or a combination of the two. You've got the AR forty seven, right, Travis? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a question by hold on, where to go? I can't remember the person's name right now. Mm -hmm. But they want to know what mags you use for your AR forty seven. I've got. Okay, so what uh, I'm going to advise people to go back and check my channel because I've got a lot of I've got some range tests now that I've done on those. I've got a I've got a 16 inch AR 47, which is basically a 762 by 39 upper on a AR 15 lower. Got one of them that's for a rifle, and then I've got the uh, seven and a half inch AR 47 upper side charger from Bear Creek Arsenal with a PSA pistol lower with an SBA three brace. And I was running, that thing ran fine. I had I bought a total of five magazines from C Products Defense. They're expensive. You know, if you look around, they're between $22 and $25 if you can't buy them locally. I've got a couple 30s. I've got a couple 20s and a couple 10s. I think I've got five or six of them. Um, when I did my initial testing, I was having feeding trouble with uh, one of those, th the one mag that actually took with me out to the range. <clears throat> but... I do have five others and all of them run perfectly. So if you get one, you want to make sure that you test it. Uh, the C products defense Duramax is what they're called. And uh, if you look around, you can find them online. They're, they're not too hard to find. I think I got mine from gun mag warehouse, but if you get an AR 47 upper and you've got the 762 by 39 ammo, get five or six mags for it. Cause you could have a defective magazine like me. Now I haven't contacted C products defense yet for, to do an exchange. I might just do that and see if they'll, they'll take it. I don't have my packages anymore. And the thing is, it ran just fine in my 16 inch AR 47 upper, no problems at all. So when I ran it in the seven and a half inch model, I thought the lower was having problems or whatever, but when I swapped out mags, that was not the case. So, um, yeah, the, the Bear Creek Arsenal side charging upper that I use, it loves Wolf polyformance. And here's the other thing too. If you get those AR 47s, you know, you might be looking at swapping out the firing pin because I had trouble shooting Tula through it. Uh, I kept getting light primer strikes with it. So I asked Bear Creek about that. They said that they don't deviate from mil spec unless they absolutely have to. And they said some people uh, swap out their firing pins for a higher quality firing pin or something that's a little bit harder, a little bit, a little bit like a millimeter longer. And so it'll actually hit that primer and pop it the right way. So if you look around, you might want to look into getting a replacement firing pin or just don't run Tula through that AR-47. Now, the funny thing, my 16 inch AR-47 has no problems at all cycling Tula at all. No problems whatsoever. And it has not have an, had an upgraded firing pin. So just keep that in mind if you happen to go. If you get those upgraded firing pins, just buy two so you have them. That way you don't have to worry about trying to find one down the road. Because a lot of these companies that make these parts, they're not huge companies and you don't know if they're going to be around. But uh, I can't throw any suggestions out there. I think Brownells might make one that you can get that'll run in an AR-47 upper that runs just the, the, the bolt, you know, the standard bolt carrier group and so on. So you're going to have to look around for that. Sorry to, to make it all long-winded and stuff, but and you do get a pretty significant flash off that. Not so much on the 16-inch model, but you do on the uh, uh, seven and a half-inch model. I mean, it's fun, but you are definitely losing some velocity and some energy there if you go that route. All right, uh, guys. Additional pros and cons about the semi-automatics, pistol-caliber carbines. What do you guys think? Pros and cons. Any ideas? Well, with the pistol-caliber carbines, you got magazine cut. Uh, mm -hmm compatibility on the mm -hmm. other hand i mean you know if if you hear a bump in the night i don't think you're gonna like strap on your war belt hook up your holster put on your put your glock in one you know get your you know pcc and uh but but uh as far as just your expense in in with with the the firearms as far as having extra mags now you've got one for your handgun now you got one for your carbine when you're at the range you can exchange them when you're when you're loading up your your ammo for for target shooting so you want to bring both to the range to work on your proficiency you you don't have to have as as many calibers in stock etc 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 so that that is that is some it's i guess that would be more of a financial kind of a mm -hmm. pro for pistol caliber carbine i mean i i would always push somebody to go for uh an ar ak pistol before going pistol caliber carbine that's just my opinion there's nothing wrong with pistol caliber carbines they're fine but if I'm going to have that kind of a form factor and that kind of weight and size, I might as well just go with a rifle caliber round. But that's just me. Um, but again, if you got PCCs, I'm sure at some point I'll probably buy one. They're just not on my priority list. But like what you said before, if you get yourself the Ruger PCC, pistol caliber carbine, it takes the same magazines as what the Security 9 or the Ruger American pistol. Kingpin, you okay. might have to correct me on that. Yeah, there's also the so. Glock. Then there's also the Glock adapter, too, that you can get for it. Yeah, it'll take the uh, Security 9 uh, magazines as well. 
you can. Yeah, you got the new one, the, the Charger version of it too now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's out now too. That thing's pretty sweet. And I think I've seen it. They were showing it off with a uh, a brace on the back of it too. So that looks that looks really cool. If you don't mind putting a little more money in it. It's got a plus. <clears throat> and I do like the fact that they put that Glock adapter on there. I thought that was really well done too on Ruger's part because, you know, Glock mags are pretty abundant. So I'm assuming it takes what, G, uh, G17 G or G19 mags. So. Yeah. And um, you can end with that. It's got the six, what is it, six and a half inch barrel. So you're going to get a little more velocity. Then you would have a nine millimeter handgun. True. Be good. Yeah, that's just true. It's another bonus with it. All right. Uh, something I want to do now, we have a viewer request. I'm going to put two different ARs up here and we're going to look at, well, they're ARs. Both of them are made by Ruger. This person has an opportunity to pick up one of these two. So panel, I want you guys to help me out with this. I'm going to go and do a little screen share. So these are the two choices that this person has. This has, we're not going to deviate, make any other suggestions. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this AR-15. So this person has an opportunity to pick one of these up right away. Uh, this is the 8529 Ruger AR-556. Okay, now again, you might say, well, just go PSA or just go blah, blah, blah. A lot of these companies are already sold out. Bear Creek doesn't have much left over. PSA is almost completely wiped out. This person doesn't want to build one, and that's perfectly fine. So the first model we're looking at here is the 8529. And what we have here, you've got your free, your free float handguard. You've got your M-Lock handguard. This person does have some M-Lock sights coming for it, so the sights are not going to be an issue, and there's going to be a optic that's going to be added to it. So this one's got the uh, Ruger. It looks like a Ruger um, uh, pistol grip on there. I don't think that's Magpul. And then also you've got that extended uh, trigger guard down there too, so if you're wearing gloves, that's perfect too. So this is the first option that we're looking at. Uh, you've got just that standard butt stock on it, which is which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It does the job. One and eight hand, uh, one and one and eight uh, right hand twist, uh, free floated barrel, sixteen point one zero inch barrel. It's not, yeah, it's just anodized finish all the way around. Six point seven pounds, and I believe that this one has. Let's see, does this have that trigger in it? This is just the standard trigger, if I'm not mistaken. I need to look at this real quick. Uh, it does have, you know, your mil spec bolt and bolt carrier group and so on. I've got single that. stage trigger. Yeah, this this is the one I've got. It's you got this one, David? Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. Just the regular birdcage flash hider in the end of it, which is fine assist. too. Yeah, yep, Ford assist, dust cover, brass deflector. Mine doesn't have the uh the the flash hider on the end and it has to have a heavy barrel. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Regulation. So what I'm trying to see right now is, is that a cal is that a um, carbine link gas system or is that a mid link gas system? I don't know. I don't know if it's, it doesn't really, I mean, it's not the end of the world. I do like a mid link better personally, but I find a little bit softer shooting, but my, you know, my Bear Creek Arsenal AR is a, a cal is a, a carbine gas link system and it's, it's perfectly fine. I mean, it, it's good for what it's pretty rough on the bolt carrier group because it really beats it up, but. Yeah, it looks it's like never let me down. Link, if you look through the um, slots in the handguard in that first picture. And mine's got the A2 front sight on it, so my gas link goes all the way down to the front sight. Oh, so, you got the A2 front. Okay, okay, I got you. Yeah, and this one right here. Yeah. That's probably about, that about 10 inches down the barrel. That's where the gas port is maybe. So, yeah. so you've got this option. Okay. Let me check and see the spec sheet here. Maybe they've got it listed on here. Oh, it's just the same stuff that's already on there. Okay, so that's that's the first option. Okay, you got that. So this is the uh, AR556, the model 8529. And then the other option is going to be to go with the AR556 MPR. Now, the differences on this one, what I notice immediately is you've got different furniture going on. Okay, you've got a different stock on the rear. You've got a much more upright pistol grip, which I'm not a big fan on. I tried the one that got sent to me from Tac Pack a couple months ago, and it's more of a... Uh, they call it an AR pistol, pistol grip. It's more upright. So it's it's maybe, so I don't know exactly what the ergonomic idea behind it is. You can keep a more upright, compact pose when you're using it. Yeah, the upright, the more upright pistol grip is like if you hold, carry your rifle tucked in, which is what the new instruction that they teach you in the military. They teach you to keep okay. your elbow tucked in instead of the old style where you keep your elbow out. So okay. Or to, when you, it's more ergonomic to have that than the um, slanted grip to keep your elbow tucked in. Okay. Now, differences on this one, different hand guard. You've just got the pick section up on the front, which is fine because you've got plenty of places to attach your accessories on here. And you've got a good, decent amount of pick section on the back for your rear uh, iron sight and then also a place to put an optic on there. 
Uh, again, five five six NATO. Uh, the stock is called the B five Bravo. Is what's on there now. This does have the two stage trigger. It is a bit more expensive, okay, but it does have the four and a half pound trigger pull. What do you guys think? Would you rather have a two stage trigger in a self defense AR, or would you rather have this the mil spec trigger? What do you guys think on this? I've got a little bit of ex experience running the Geisleys, and I love it for at the range, but I don't really have any training or practice with the two stage trigger. You know, off the range. What do you guys think? So I've never used anything other than a mil spec trigger in an AR, either in five five six or three hundred blackout. Now I've used, you know, some some kind of uh, uh, mil spec triggers that are a little bit more polished and a little bit made out of a little bit better material, but it's still they're still mil spec. I don't know any different, and I still don't get this whole they're junk. Because I've never had a problem with it. I've got headshots at 500 meters with iron sights with an M16A2 with a mil spec trigger. The trigger was never an issue. I'm not saying having a nicer trigger is a bad thing. But if you've never shot one with a more expensive trigger or two-stage trigger or this fancy com competition trigger or whatever, I don't really know that you'll know the difference. Trigger control is trigger. If you jerk the trigger, you're going to jerk it whether you got a $100 trigger in there or you got the stock trigger. So that's that's more that's more I think skill or practice than than anything else. I'm not saying that some of these triggers might not be really good for like this really precision prone Olympic style shooting or some some competitive kind of thing like that. But I just you know if if uh, it's the big cost issue, then uh, you know if it really brings up the price or something, I, I don't know that that's really it. And the whole buying accuracy. Um, I don't really know about that either with, with the whole trigger. But. Okay, I'm gonna say I will say this, Quib. When you've got it bench and you've got it in a lead sled and so on, you do. It does take less effort to pull the trigger, and you do notice m less motion at the very end, right before it breaks. Now, with enough practice, you can work past that. I'm just saying the first shots that I took on the uh, six hour, I think it was the M400 with the Geisley in it. It was much easier to stay to, to, to shoot accurately for me. It was with just the iron sights because the gun didn't have that tendency to pull back and lift before the trigger would break. But that was mounted in a lead sled. Real life applications, I don't think it's really going to matter if all you need to do is just go center mass or headshots. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's just it. I, you know, so I'm not saying you shouldn't have a nicer trigger. If you want to get a nicer trigger, but if it's going to raise the price or you've got one with a mil spec trigger, this is your entry level. This is your first AR or whatever it mm -hmm. is. You know, this is the only one that's available, and and you're new to this whole thing. And somebody sees it and they go, "Oh, your thing, your you know, your your gun's crap because." Because of the trigger, and I'm the one. I'm the one that's always dogging on these cheap ARs, especially when they don't come with sights. That is so bizarre to me. But but uh, I just I don't know. The trigger is not even a selling point to me. So which way would you guys go? Would you recommend? Now it's only about a hundred and what do we got here? What did the person say to me? A um, hundred and twenty dollar difference. Hundred twenty dollars more to go with this model versus this model. So what do you guys think? Would you go the more standard kind of? basic mil spec layout or would you spend the I, money and go this route i would yep. go with the the more mil spec layout but that's i guess just because of my military training mm -hmm. the familiarity uh not really the price that 120 twenty dollar difference really isn't isn't a, a deal breaker for me but i i still prefer the more mil spec if you have no military training it may not matter right yeah, you know, the $120 difference could buy you, well, I don't know about now, but back in the day, it could buy you a lot. It could still buy you a lot of magazines and yeah, ammo, okay? So keep that in mind. Training, yeah, here's the thing. The military training squib and I had, yeah, if that's what you got, go with the first one. But if you got the more modern military training, the second one would actually be better because they're teaching you to use that the tuck elbow now, and that one's more ergonomic for a tuck elbow. So that if you, depending on what military experience they may or may not have would determine between the two. Uh, and, yeah. Whichever one, I don't, other than that, I don't know which one to tell you because one person might be more comfortable with the first one, somebody else might be more comfortable with the second one because of the way they hold the rifle and stuff. It's hard. Yeah, I mean, I have no doubt about the reliability. And I, I honestly, I'm kind of leaning more towards the original mil spec model. Yeah, they're both going to be reliable. Yeah, I mean, Ruger makes a really nice AR 15. So it's, this is, you're getting I to the new the one original. now where the person, it's the, the best bets for the person to handle them and see which one they like better. So, yeah. True, true. I mean, me, I always put an MOE um, stock on mine because I like to have a little more cushion on the back of there, but there's nothing wrong with just that standard tax, you know, just normal mil spec style stock on the rear M4 side. I've had four of those. Oh, yeah. So. True that. Yeah, yeah. 
Does anybody, guys on the panel, does anybody want to push for the modified version at all or the NPR instead? I mean, sometimes uh, you don't look chance. good in the apocalypse. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What's that? Says, sometimes you gotta look good in the apocalypse. So sometimes you gotta spend a little bit of extra money to go Gucci. So I'm gonna go with number two. Go Gucci. Go Gucci. We'll call it the Gucci NPR. <laughs> take take the price difference and use it to get a decent sling for it. Yeah. I mean, I, could, I could use either one of them because I, I I shot both style where you got the more elbow tucked, and I've also shot where you got the old style where you got your elbow, you know, level with the ground and Mm-hmm. You know, with your short or your left shoulder, with your right handed turned towards your target. So, I mean, either one would work for me. The person who's wanting it, I don't know. <laughs> Let's leave it up to the panel to decide. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or leave it up to the chat. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Have a vote on the chat. Um, so, what I would say to this person is it's whatever one is going to be most comfortable with you while you're holding it in the store. That's going to, because if there's anything about that more upright grip that you don't like, you know, properly holding it, then go with the original mil spec style. I would just go with the money savings and put it towards the optics, put it towards the ammo and the magazines. If they They're both going to work just fine. What's that? If they don't have a lot of training, that first one might be the better option. And that's not that we don't, yeah. I don't, not knowing what level of training this person has. There, there is no military training for this person, but this person does know how to operate a firearm, but still there. Yeah. There's no military training here. I would go with the first one then. Okay. Cause that's yeah. probably more akin to what they're used to in other firearms. But man, that compensator on the end—I love that. <laughs> no, uh, they're both one, they're both one and eight twists, by the way. So the one and eight twist is going to be fine for you know running a variety of grain weights. Yeah, that, that MPR is nice. I yeah. That. Well, yeah, and D-Web puts out a good point. A, a pistol, an AR-50 pistol grip's like twenty bucks. So if they don't like the grip, they can always change it. Well, yeah, you can always go that route too. You can always put a more traditional, a different angle grip on there if you want to. Yeah, but there's there's a plethora of different grips you can. Put yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. All right. So that's kind of my uh, my thoughts on that. <laughs> What's that, guys? I said I'm changing my answer. I'm going with the NPR. <laughs> if they don't like the grip, they can change it. I would say go just original, just original mil spec, in my opinion. But that's just me. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll throw my two cents in on triggers as far as that yeah. goes. Trigger groups and just stock versus you know modified or Geisley or anything. If a person is used to a stock feeling trigger, it doesn't matter if it's a hunting rifle or if it's a pistol or a carbine, it, shotgun, doesn't matter. If a guy's used to that, then stay with that until a guy can have a little bit of time to mess with something new before he just completely switches all of his guns over to different trigger groups or mm -hmm. packs or whatever. you know. And then if a guy's... Because there was a guy, he brought a AR-15 down for a guy I used to work with about a couple of years ago. And I'm used to like seven, eight pounds of pull on mm -hmm. most of my stuff. And he had an AR with a two and a half pound pull trigger. And I was like, holy crap, you just sneeze. Yeah. And that thing little little three gun there going on. Whoa. Yeah, that's, oh, that's a little yeah. on the light side for an AR-15. Three and a half. I pound. hate it. Three and a half pounds, not bad. Two and a half. No yeah, this is four and a half as well. And this is a, it's a Ruger aftermarket trigger, by the way. It's their own in-house trigger, which is nice that it's factory installed and it's going to be covered under warranty and stuff too. You know. Yeah, four and a half's not bad. Mm -hmm. What I would suggest to this person is do a little, do some, maybe find some reviews on that trigger and see if anybody's done any videos on it, or if anybody has done any reviews on, it, see what they think about it. If it if it's a noticeable difference, if it's worth the premium, you know, is a nice and smooth pull all the way through, or you know, is it worth it or not? And that's because, I mean, that could be the big one too. You might buy it and think it's awesome, but then you take it to the range and you just don't, you just don't like the trigger. You just can't use the trigger, you know? Uh, you might be a little worried about it going off once you start to put your finger on it because you don't know where the break is, if there is even a break. So, you know, um, yeah, yeah. yeah I, either way, you're not going to go wrong, but I say go with the first one. Yeah, it, just as long as it's nice, crisp, and smooth when it breaks. That, mm -hmm. That's my big thing. I just hate those rough, dragging. It just seems like it goes on forever and ever and ever. Then all of a sudden, it just catches up with you and just surprises the crap out of you. Those are the ones that I don't yeah. like. 
I, by the way, I believe that those have um, Cold Hammer Forge barrels on them too. So you're getting a premium barrel with that through Ruger. So you're paying a little more money than you would with you're paying. Well, it really what he can get that 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 first one for the original stock style one for. It's pretty much on par with PSA. Yeah, it's about the same price. I mean, they do that in PSA for. I just kind of find something kind of comparable to it, and they're basically at the same price at this point because PSA is down to like a couple six hundred fifty dollar AR fifteens and then some three hundred eights and stuff like that. Some AR tens. You can get a cold hammer forged in the PSA too if you get the uh, mm -hmm. um, FN barrel in it. So. Yep, I don't care exactly. Okay, now the next question I want to get out there because I don't know if we're going to get a chance to do any little virtual window shopping like I wanted to. First of all, I want to let people know there's lots of firearms that are still for sale online. The problem you're going to run into is some delays. And a lot of the websites now have gotten to a point where your FFL has to call in directly to the distributor or the website that you want to buy from. And that's the way they can confirm if they have the stock because so many people have bought guns online over the last couple of days. So go to your local firearm store and talk to that person, see if they can get online for you. Let them make the phone call to the distributor. Make sure they have it in stock before you buy it. And then find out what the shipping delay is going to be. Also, make sure you get ammo for that firearm before you buy it, too. Because the gun without ammo doesn't do you any good. Uh, so the question I want to ask you guys is, would this be the time for somebody considering buying a firearm in maybe a not-so-traditional caliber or not? What do you guys think? Probably wouldn't recommend a first time buyer go 25 ACP or something, 45 gap or whatever. But if you're somebody on this panel or somebody out in the chat that just wants to get into something new, now would be a good time because you got a lot of time to research and study and mm -hmm. mess around with stuff. Um, how much does 38 Super go for these days? I don't know, because, you know, the funny part is every time we have some kind of an ammo scare or panic, I've gone to the store just to look at Walmart, and they've had some of these kind of some, <clears throat> I don't buy handgun ammo at Walmart anymore, but, you know, they would have they would have the 357, the 44 mag, and you'd find 40, they had 40, and there might be, I don't know if I've ever seen 38 Super in Walmart before, or even 10 millimeter, but say you go to some of your bigger sporting goods stores or your local gun shop, they might have those in stock. The reason why I say it, just kind of jokingly, is that 22 TCM, you know, you can get those Rock Island Armory 22 TCM handguns that look like 1911s. And uh, they that that TCM, that 22 TCM ammo is readily available right now. And it isn't much more expensive than, say, 40 cal. So if a person wanted something and all that's available, say, is 22 LR revolvers and all the high points are sold out, which they will be soon because they got shut down, by the way. Um, they might be down to just the nitty gritty of what's available. So... So, David, you got a good point about that is, you know, you might want to make sure you can get the ammo for it. Is, it. is it really that available? I mean, I would take it over nothing, but I don't know. Yeah, the thing you got to worry about with these uh, more obscure rounds, like uh, you got Marco Dunn out there saying 132, William Trader saying a different 32. If you got to make sure that the, you're getting the right ammo for the gun as well. You get a new shooter, they go and they get a 32. And they just know it's a 32 and don't know if it's a 32 ACP, 32 oh. Wesson, 32 H and R Magnum. Yeah, yeah. You can run into issues. Uh, another thing to keep into consideration too um, is if somebody might be buying a Milser gun, you know, they might get themselves a Makarov or they might get themselves a Tokarev pistol. You might have trouble finding that ammo. I mean, a lot of these places are sold out of all. I had trouble finding Tokarev ammo for the CZ52 test that I did. I ended up having to buy it from SG Ammo months ago. Because I couldn't find anything locally at all. So if I wanted, what is that, 762 by 25? Is that what the Toker Rev round is? Yeah. So if you're you going to buy one of these, at a store, you, you know, somebody might be that. like, oh, I got a, I got a $200, you know, Yugoslavian Milser pistol. What'd you get? A Toker Rev. I'm like, um, we're going to have to make some phone calls to find you some ammo. <laughs> uh, is it a 762 by 25? 25 or is it a 9 millimeter? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, well, it depends on which one you go with, too. So yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I mean, they, they remember the tokes come in two different calibers. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not going to find any 9mm either right now, too, or there's a good chance it won't be on the shelves. You might have to scout around to find a box of that also at this point. So I would say stay away. Man, I don't even know what kind of... I. So guys, for somebody who wants to buy a gun right now, what do we tell them? For a new buyer, let's just say new buyer. Let's just say new buyer. I mean, I if, wouldn't get I wouldn't get an expensive caliber, and I wouldn't get a rare caliber because they're getting used to shooting a gun. They who knows how much training they're going to do, how much practice they're going to do. They're going to be eating through ammo. A nine millimeter would be great because 
even though it's selling a lot, uh, when it is in stock, it's fairly affordable. You know, uh, just like you, what you're saying with the the rifle there, the five five six, even for mm -hmm. uh, a, a rifle caliber handgun, uh, five five six is plentiful and affordable. Mm -hmm. And even if things go up in price a little bit, even if they go down in stock a little bit, those are common. As much as I like the forty five ACP for a handgun, uh, a nine millimeter I think is is good for a be beginner, especially. When you know a lot of people have questions about how much does it cost? Do they see a two hundred dollar rifle or two hundred dollar handgun and they go, "Wow, two hundred dollars!" And you know we're all going two hundred dollars, <laughs> you know, yeah, and because they don't know. And sometimes you just end up with that beginner gun that maybe you love or maybe you don't, and you can always trade it later or sell mm -hmm. it later or give it to one of your kids or keep it as a backup or whatever you do, but. I don't know with 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 regard to the cost of ammo or availability of ammo. I mean, you got to look. I mean, this person they've got to get out to the range. They've got to mm -hmm. practice. I mean, they're not gonna. It's not like the movies where you just pick up a gun for the first time and that first mag, it's all bullseyes. You know, it's just not like that in real life. Yeah, I would tell the person. The go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, this ain't The Walking Dead. <laughs> I would Every, go. Everything's dead shot. If you go to the, yeah, no doubt. If you go to the gun store, see what they have in stock for ammo, and then see what firearms are available in that caliber. You know, I mean, I'd hate to see somebody get stuck with a 22 LR, but I would take it over nothing. I would almost rather have a 22 Magnum if I had to have something over nothing. Um, you know, like maybe one of these Rough Riders with the 22 for Mag cylinder. Defense, for home defense, somebody who probably never wanted a gun, who hates guns, who didn't want us to have the right to keep and bear arms, who's going out to buy that first gun because they're afraid of what might happen, they're probably going for the cheapest gun they've got mm -hmm. in that store. It don't matter if it's a rifle, a shotgun, a handgun. It doesn't matter to them. And they're, they're, they're going to get a box of ammo with it. They're going to go home, and they're probably not going to do anything with it. And that's oh, yeah. unfortunate. That's really yeah. – and we all know how you know accidents happen with that sort of thing, but – yeah, as far as the price thing, if you were just talking about Grim was just talking about a midnight show last night because he's working in a gun shop right now. And uh they're uh selling they sold almost every one of their handguns except for the things like the Sig Legion and performance mm. and performance centers and stuff like that. All the cheap ones are what's sold. Yeah, your thousand dollar guns are gonna be the last ones they're gonna go. Well, depending on the market and the environment, I mean, you might might be in a more affluent neighborhood where there's a little more money flowing around, so people have that money. But it's a pretty good sign of what you're talking about, you know. So I'm just checking to see what's available right now. And there's a lot of 22 LRs. There are a couple high points still available over on Classic. Um, the Toker Evs are still available in the 762 by 25. There's still a couple G2Cs and G2Ss that are for sale on there too. If you need something in nine millimeter, if you can get the ammo. 380. Are you guys seeing 380 sold out in your neck of the woods? I just bought some. <laughs> okay. Okay. So 380s, you're still finding it on the shelves? Yeah. I'm still finding nine millimeter around here, too. So. Okay. I guess it kind of depends on the environment. It might depend on the neighborhood and stuff like that. So We went to the local sporting um, goods store, not this last Sunday, but the Sunday prior. And at that point, I had heard tons mm -hmm. of people online saying everything sold out. We went into the sporting goods store, and there was tons of ammo, there were tons of guns. Now that was what would that be? Uh, like nine days ago, uh, or or eight days ago. So I don't know what's happened in eight days, but I think it really depends on your area. I think some areas, if they don't have a whole lot of stores, or they they may be out of stock, and in other areas it might still be plentiful. Yeah, the two calibers that you, they didn't nine have. Days ago. <coughs> oh, sorry, dude. sorry, I can tell you nine days ago. That's exactly what it was up here. Now it's completely uh, wiped out. We're looking on the shelves, very limited, limited. I mean, you got right uh, hunting, hunting calibers, and some 22 is all that's left. And see, I'm not going to go to any of the local stores because I'm trying to follow the order to stay home when at all possible. If it's not necessary, don't go. Also, I really don't know if they're closing down the gun stores and sporting goods stores as an unnecessary business. So some people might have to go with online only, not necessarily to buy the gun, but okay, they got the gun and now they're going, man, do I have enough ammo? They may have to go to an online uh, site and have it shipped to their house, which you can't have ammunition shipped to your home, fortunately, unless you live in California. 
So that's that's at least something good. If you've already got the gun and you just bought one box of shells and you're there going, maybe this isn't enough or maybe I should take this a little bit more seriously and maybe go down to the range and stuff. And then you go down to Dunham's or wherever and they're, the doors are shut. Uh, look for look for it online. You'll probably get a better deal online. And you could also pick up stuff like extra mags, cleaning supplies, stuff like that. And then make that shipping or shipping and handling fee call, uh, um I guess uh, factor that in and say this is absolutely worth it because this is cheaper than the store without the shipping and handling. But I bought so many things that now it's it's a break even kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There's a question out there in the chat. Uh, how was how's the five seven coming along? Well, five seven's readily available. <laughs> it's not it. sold out. If you want some, if you want some five seven, there's you can still get it, guys. I got Fifty four cents a round. I got I got a question for Squibby. How many people, do you, how many poor people do you think have uh, thrown a gun on their credit card recently? And that's not a, that's not a stab at you. I'm that's I'm being serious. Like everybody. Well, that's just it. Okay, so here's the thing. On their credit um, card. Okay. Everybody's credit's probably going to go in the tank anyhow if they keep doing things the way they're doing it. So what does it really matter at that point? Just either declare bankruptcy or dig yourself out of the hole by working extra and and paying off all your penalties and late fees, and, and eventually you'll build your, you rebuild your credit. So is it better to have debt and bad credit, but you're, you're, you can protect your family, or are you going to say, I'm not going to do something like that because I don't use credit, and when the police can't show up because they're all home sick with SARS, uh, and you've got nothing other than that sharp, pointy stick. So this is yet another reason why it's like debt is not a bad thing, people. Some of you don't agree with me on that. And that's fine. That's your life, but I'm going to die with that. And I don't care, but I'm not going to die because somebody came into my house and, and tried to kill my family and me. Cause uh, they're, they're going to leave in a body bag full of holes if they try to come in here. So yeah. and, and some dog an fights in. too. I'll let the dog in a couple good ones. That that's their warning. If they run out, that's good. But if they decide to stay, <laughs> yeah. you guys, you're Here's a crazy one real quick. Defense, defense dad, who's also in Nebraska, he said, I saw an article today that Omaha is shutting down handgun purchases unless you have a CCW. Regular permit won't do it. Yeah. Sure, they, um, we, yeah. didn't get it. We, were, we didn't really have a run on gun stores here, except for people from Maryland on the first day when the craziness all started happening. And they were all told, nope, we can't sell this to you. <laughs> so. Because for some, you know, you go to the gun stores here because we're right on the border with Maryland. And you hear people come in from Maryland. Nope, I can't sell it to you. Nope, I can't sell it to you. Mm -hmm. Nope, I can't sell it to you. It's like you, you, by now you think one of these gun shops will just have a tape recorder and just push play you know, whenever somebody from Maryland comes in. Because <clears throat> they're wanting to buy things like ARs or 30 mile magazines and stuff. And, you know, they can't buy it. They can't sell that to them because they can't have it in their state. So. Yeah, so see, all, almost almost all the guns I own, I bought with a credit card over the course of my life. Uh, only a few have I ever bought with cash. Now, that's my the way I handle my fa finances. And we make a joke about it. And I'm, I'm glad we do because I don't mind getting getting jabbed over it and, and stuff like that. It, it doesn't bother me at all. It's, it's kind of funny. If that's my thing, I'll be the credit card guy. But here's <laughs> the thing. If you, if you look at my Lamat, even with the interest... I've made my money back. If you look at my Garand, even with the interest, I've made my money back. There's been a lot of guns that I've bought when they were very inexpensive and very plentiful that have gone way up in value. And if I tried to buy them today, no. Nah, oh, yeah, you'd be paying just, yeah. three times more than what you did before. So, yeah, yeah. The funny part is both of the guns I bought my son were done on credit card. All of mine have been bought with cash. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We're going to get ready for the uh, Guns and Geeks podcast over on the uh, Never Enough Ammo channel. A lot of us go over there and, and participate. So we're going to start to wrap it up here. Uh, hey, I do appreciate everybody leaving comments on my uh, Ruger Wrangler giveaway video. We're going to be giving away a Ruger Wrangler here in a couple of weeks. Hopefully, if everything works and we're still around and things are still going the way it's supposed to go, we'll have to kind of play it by ear. But that is the plan right now. So if you want to get in that drawing, go on over to my YouTube channel, Travis P11. Leave a comment on my Ruger Wrangler giveaway video, and we'll do that drawing live uh, during maybe an episode of Caliber Corner, and we'll see who's going to be the winner, and uh, we'll go from there on that. So, uh, guys, any any final comments? You need? Let's go ahead and just uh, kind of run it around the horn here, let everybody get a plug-in for their channel, and then we'll go ahead and call it. Kingpin, we're going to start off with you, man. I appreciate you being here this evening. 
Thanks for having me, Travis. Great conversation. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody out in the chat and in the panel. Everybody go check out the Gun Toten Pacifist channel. He's Ooh. got some cool videos over there. Super cool guy. Could use a few more subs. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, there's a lot of us watching gun content right now because there ain't much else to do. So, uh, Squibby, Squibblo, anything to say before we go? Yeah, everybody keep a level head. Mm -hmm. Don't become part of the problem. There's people out there putting a lot of bad information out, including our media. But there's a lot of people using the Internet and they're putting out, you know, we're going to be under martial law or the Internet's going to stop working or, or the American dollar isn't going to be worth anything. Or I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. We haven't gone through something quite like this. We've gone through things similar, but not completely like this before. This is new territory <clears throat> and everything. But if we keep our heads about us and we just, once we get on the backside of it, we start pumping money back into the economy. We're all going to have to roll up our sleeves and work. We're going to have to make sacrifices. I have no idea what's going to happen here, but I'm going to do my best to use everything I've learned from all the adversity I've had in the past to try to get through this. And we need to think about what we're doing as responsible gunners. We always talk about, you know, the way you represent yourself is the way you represent the 2A community and stuff like that. Let's not do anything rash. I know some people are a little bit on edge or a little bit panicky. People have got their, their guns loaded in their home. Good. Keep them there. I'm not saying if you go out, you shouldn't conceal carry. I, conceal carry if you can legally do it, et cetera, et cetera. But just be a little bit, in addition to maybe being a little bit more on guard, also be a little bit more, I guess, um, think a little bit more about how your actions might affect all of us. The first time somebody pulls a gun at the store over toilet paper is the first time they, you know, going to start saying, yep, we got to take their guns. Get, you know, just slow down and we're going to get through this, but don't be a bad ambassador for our community. We already have them trying to do enough stuff. We don't need to give them any excuse right now. Exactly, man. Exactly. And if you guys uh, know anybody that's a first time gun owner, I don't, I'm not saying you want to, practice not so safe, safe social distancing, but if you can FaceTime with them or do a Google meet with them and kind of run through some of the basics on that firearm that they purchased, you might want to do that. Maybe kind of walk them through the process of taking it apart and cleaning it. So we can use technology and we can use the resources that we have so we can keep in touch with friends and family. Cause I know if I had a aunt or an uncle or a family member that bought a gun for the first time that I would definitely get on the wire with them and work with them and help them get comfortable with that firearm. And maybe tell you know, them about your state gun laws that they might not know anything cause mm -hmm. they've never cared before and tell them things about what they can do to behave responsibly so that they don't mm -hmm. they don't get in any sort of trouble with the law or they don't they don't make it worse on themselves to have it to be ready to use it if they need to hopefully we don't we probably won't but you know if they if they've got it and they're nervous or that definitely if you're going to take the time to 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 go online and and show them that stuff just have a, a, you know, if this is your friend, you know how you can talk to them. Mm -hmm. Talk to them and just let them know. Because, I mean, that's exactly. one of the things they do in the concealed carry classes is they go over the state laws regarding how you can carry, where you can carry, what to do if you have to use it. You know, they even try to, you know, tell you things about when to, you know, de-escalate it, walk away, other time, you know. I mean, so these, and I'm not saying you have to become a, a, an ad hoc uh, instructor, but as somebody in the community that's trying to help somebody new, it's a good way to kind of extend the, the olive branch and also dispel so many myths out there. I mean, people think as soon as they buy it, they've got a license to kill. And we all know that is not the truth. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of you know specific laws, especially about vehicle transport and what's considered brandishing and what's not. What's, supposed, what's the castle doctrine? Is there one in your state? These are things that people need to know. And they're just going out there buying the guns and they're just signing off on it. They're getting... You know, they're, they're getting them, but do they really know, you know, the legality behind it? Hopefully people are taking some time to read up on that. So we'll see. All right. And uh, Rich, what do you want to say, man? Anything you want to say before we go? Yeah. Um, here in West Virginia, we've recently had two pro 2A bills passed. The governor said that he was going to sign them. Now it's increasingly looking like more like they're going to go into effect without him signing them because of how busy he's been dealing with the our current crisis and everything. Mm hmm these are good bills, so it's not a big situation here. But if you live in a state where you have a legislature who's passing uh, anti-2A bills, make sure your governor doesn't sit and let those get enacted with that them taking action on it. Keep it on your governor's ass. Write your governor. Phone your governor's office. Make If you have these kind of uh, bad gun bills that are sitting on his desk, 
or her desk waiting to be signed or vetoed so that they don't just sit there and let these get enacted without their signature on them. In, mm -hmm. in the case of West Virginia, like I said, we have two good bills, so it's not going to matter if he signs them or if they go into action without him signing them. But if there's bad bills sitting on the governor's desk, make sure they take action on it. Don't let them become law without the governor taking action on it. Also, if they've got, if you guys have a, a state or local gun rights organization, have them sign up for it. A lot of those things are just free. You know, they're free will offering if you're to support it, they're free to join. Uh, we got the Nebraska Firearms Owners Association, and they're already busy right now uh, in conversations with the um, Omaha Police Department about what people are supposed to do if they want to buy a handgun in Omaha and they don't have their CCW. You know, is that that is that really something that's legally allowed? Can they say no purchases on handguns? I don't know. So we'll see where that goes. But our NFOA is already on the ball on that. So state and local organizations, make sure you guys uh, definitely steer the new gun owners in that direction so they can start to educate themselves a little bit, make them activists, make them uh, be a little proactive themselves. All right, Pat Hirsch, your first time on the show, man. How'd it go for you? Was it okay? Uh, yeah, I uh, got a lot of different points of view mm -hmm. on everything tonight. So, yeah, I'm cool. definitely glad I came on, especially on this subject at this heightened awareness mm -hmm. <laughs> right now. And uh, just kind of hitting on what everybody else said. You know, if there's a first-time gun owner out there, and some and they try to approach you just be nice i mean unless they're just a total dick just just be nice try to answer their questions point them in the right direction uh like squib said you know extend that olive branch be nice you know at, at this point in time we need to convert as many people as we can over to the 2A community so yeah just just point them in the right direction. Good information, 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 information. Mm -hmm. You just you just can't have enough of it when it comes to this kind of stuff. Oh, definitely, definitely. Oh, definitely. All right, Duke Liberty. Anything we say before we go? Thanks for being here tonight, man. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for the invite, Travis. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, hey man, just just remember, you know, take it easy. Try to. Everybody's just got to try and relax a little bit. This is going to be some dark days, but we're going to sort this stuff out. We're America, baby. It's what we do. So just stay safe, be cool, uh, look after your neighbors, and take care of people. But yeah, thanks for the invite, man. Always a great, great panel. Lots of fun. Sounds good, man. Cool, cool. appreciate you being here. So uh, real quick, let's just see who is joining in this evening. We've got a little Marco Dunn out there. Rich White's over there with us tonight. We got g23 in the house we've got guy that comments with us this evening uh ecode is out there scott b79 kingpin's out there and over here sketchy rolls joining in this evening billy the cab driver g webs in the house and gabriel guy that comments tacos and french fries out there billy the cab driver let's see uh chris from kent chris from kentucky is out there this evening i don't know i was with this before it might be somebody new watching this evening defense dad out there or defense dad right patrick's out there too uh, AC97 was watching William Trader out there also, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people I'm missing. I want to apologize, but uh, I think that's about it. So we'll go ahead and call it their sketchy roll SS Pond, Yoder, Texas. Thank you guys for watching. So this has been a Caliber Corner episode number 128, and tonight our mission was just to talk about different types of firearms, what works for the home, what doesn't work, what, what do we keep around the home for, uh, keep around the house for uh, home defense, and hopefully we got some knowledge out there for you this evening. If you're a first time gun buyer, you know, don't be afraid to ask somebody that you know that's a firearms person. Maybe give them a phone call, text them, video chat with them, whatever. Just say, hey, I've got a new firearm. I need some help. They're going to be more than willing to help you. You'd be surprised because we want to welcome you to the community. So that's it, guys. I want everybody to have fun. I want you to be safe. Y'all take care. We'll see everybody next week. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, Alicia. Adios, Alicia. Adios.